Warning, warning. It's a new podcast episode and it's gonna go crazy. Yeah. Hello and welcome back to Discovering SCP. Oh, you didn't realize? <laughs> That's what you've clicked on. <laughs> you fool. There's no more <laughs> room for escape. You're now listening. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Darnell, what has been going on in your life as of late? I want to know, and so do our viewers. So, oh, do you, like my personal life, do you actually want to know? If you think, know, if, if you think you've got anything that the viewers will enjoy. Yeah, on. I've been working on, you know, my, my coursework, my degree. I've been looking into internships. The tough thing about tech is there are like two internships where I live, and then everything else requires me to move to Washington or California, which I really don't want to do. Mm. Um, aside from that, you know, been working on Good Morning Poon Poon. There's an episode, the epi- episode three will be out by the time this podcast episode is out. And uh, we have a new intro in it that is like super over the top. You just, I just showed me it. you. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much, but I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, what else have I been doing? You know, I was watching some movies with some of my GMP co-hosts. What you watching? Because uh, Tan's been very busy. We watched... So, I, I want to show you this movie. It's really hard to find copies of uh, online. It's called Love Exposure. Love Exposure. Uh, and it's really hard to explain. And it's both incredibly sad, but also really fucking funny. Like, mm. I, I, I genuinely cannot explain it to you, but you will love it when we watch it. Um, that's all I can really say. See, I see. Is my audio coming in all right? Yeah, it's coming in for fine for me. It looks a little quiet on my audacity. I don't want to turn it up too much, though. I myself okay. have been uh, playing some VR recently. I recently got myself an Oculus Quest 2. Uh, I'm really enjoying that it. That is right. I got Blade and Sorcery mm. today, so I've just been a feral fucking animal for the last couple of hours, just <laughs> cutting my way through the virtual mass. That's so. right. So and, uh, that, that's Tan, the cat you've unlocked primal Tanami. He is so much fun in VR. He's so alive. It's like watching a child on Christmas. But uh, unfortunately, his computer cannot handle recording while he's in VR yet. He still needs some more RAM, uh, maybe a better processor. So we can't... If we record any VR videos, if you guys are interested, I'm happy to show them. But it would be like on my screen, and I do not have VR. But it mm. would be Tanhony in VR having a blast, if that interests you. We no, no, would be the camera, VR chat. pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is there a way to do Blade and Sorcery without VR so I could record you doing that there is too? Not. There is not, though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it would probably just be a shitty game without VR, to be honest. It just looks like a really bad... Uh, without the VR aspect, it's kind of just like a really bad... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, what's the, what's that game? Mountain Blade. Mountain Blade. Mm. But, um, yeah, once he's got the c- capacity or capabilities, I, I'm sure he'll record some, and you guys will love it. Uh, but I might, I might cameraman some VR. So if you guys are interested, let us know in the comments if you want to see VR chat. Uh, we would probably post them irregularly, not like t- t- so we don't mess up the lobotomy corp series. Mm. But um, yeah, now that we've got all our announcements out of the way, all our all our stuff going on, uh, how many SCPs do we have today? Schrodinger's. We might have one. We might have two. But first, we have to open the box <gasps> to find out. See. Have you? Are you familiar with then... Schrodinger's cat? That cat that both exists and yet does not. <laughs> so he's reached mm. that realm of existence. Show me your true strength. <laughs> you think, therefore you aren't. That's not... Schrodinger's Schrodinger didn't say that. Schrodinger didn't say that. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to use my blade and sorcery skills. I'm wielding a great sword in each hand and I'm using them like spider legs to climb to your house. <laughs> <laughs> that was Schrodinger's enemy, Rain Descartes. They were notorious rivals. They okay, but anyway, each other enough, many enough of this. No one knows what we're talking yes. about. I don't yeah, know what we're know talking about. about. Those guys. Yeah, but okay, yeah. Put on, put on. The <laughs> yeah, they know, they know that Schrodinger existed. They don't know what the fuck you're give, talking about. Give, give me the, give me the. As Rain Descartes is the guy who said, "I think, therefore I am." Yeah, but no one, don't know. I, I'm not talking about the fact that these people exist. I know what the fuck are you talking about? Is what I mean. <laughs> Oh, whatever. Let's just read your dumb SCP. What okay. is this? You have new unread messages. Is that like a continuation? What What are you looking at? The, at the bottom, there's a link, and yeah, when I click yeah, it, it just yeah, sends me to the same SCP. No, no, no. You don't click that yet. That's the next iteration of the page. Go back. Wait, what? Go back to the start. 
Oh, that's confusing. Okay, hold on. Now it's I'm lost. <laughs> okay, I'm at 3002, what, what, I think. I, what's, what's the address bar say? Because you might... <laughs> uh, scp-wiki.wiki.com slash scp-3002. Okay. So, yeah, when you see a Not link at the end, don't, the just, don't just click it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know what was going on. I, I usually go through... What I usually do is I click the things because it opens up, like, new text, right? And it just makes it easier for me reading through with you. So that's what I usually do. So that's why I okay. clicked it. Anyway, this is SCP-3002, right, and this is called Attempts to Assassinate Fort, and it is by Maydee. Oh, all right. Spin us off. <laughs> On M Monday, July 28, 2014, at 12.50pm, K. Thomas, Thomas K. at foundation.scp, wrote, Ah, as per 051's instructions, I have sent you a copy of 3002's file. Let me know if you need anything else. Dr. K. Thomas, Information and Memetics Division, Site 82, with the email address. Doc I love how their email is so, like, innocent for <laughs> SCP. Do at foundation.scp. <laughs> Document prepared by Dr. Daryl Lloyd. Dates 2014-07-20. Item number, SCP-3002. Object class... Safe. Special containment procedures. What? Hmm? Hold on. Did you say it? I said safe. Say it again, in red. Safe. Alright, that's it. I'm doing asthma. Please. Asthma? <laughs> asthma. <laughs> You didn't hail it for that? Alright. You gonna do it? You're getting it now. You gonna do it? You keep saying you're oh, gonna yeah. do, do it. Oh yeah, do you want me to read not... this right now? Do you want me to read this right now? I'll, I'll mm. continue reading the SCP if you like. That's what the dudes are here for. Item number SCP-3002. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. A single prisoner affected by SCP-3002 is to be kept for the purposes of testing. Analysis. Is that all you got? They will be held in a standard humanoid containment cell in Site 41. Verbal and physical interaction. Okay, I'm gonna start reading because I feel like you were, you're not actually. Testing. I feel like with this you're the not actually paying attention to what you're reading. You're just trying to annoy me. Of South Rock Penitentiary. What did you just read? Tell me, tell me, tell me the information that you've just given. And are to be monitored for any reoccurrence of SCP-3002. You what I just read is that a bunch of people are in prison and they're, those prisoners all share a memory and they've been given amnestics and are being monitored. I can keep track, Tan. I can do this all day if you don't if you can't say safe right. Tan? Description. SCP-3002 refers to a specific <laughs> memory shared by 85% of the prisoner population in the South Rock Penitentiary, located near Lafayette, Indiana. Affected inmates are all able to recall a specific day from their childhood. Specific so dates vary between subjects, but the majority remember this day occurring sometime between the ages of 10 to 13. SCP-3002 accounts consist of the individual walking through or playing in a forested garden with their best friend at the time. At some point in their memory, inmates recall getting into an argument with their friend. Several accounts have details that conflict with that person's actual life, as several subjects did not live in or travel to locations of the forest until their adult life. SCP-3002 was originally discovered when Dr. Susan Fairbank, a psychologist working at the prison, noticed a large amount of inmates mentioning specific memories that all seemed to be identical. The incident was brought to the attention of the Foundation after agents monitoring a messaging board concerning psychology for a different anomaly noticed Dr. Fairbank's account of the shared memory. So was was what did um was the theme for 3000 because I assume this was another 3000 entry like memory or amnestics or something? Horror. Okay, well, a lot of these have to do with memory. Hmm. I guess that's a good source of horror. At the time, I guess of people are scared of losing themselves, like dementia style. Hmm. At the time of initial containment, inmates were able to recall details of SCP-3002 with identical clarity. After several interviews, uh, subjects began to recall progressively less detail in SCP-3002, to the point where recollection of the affected memory was similar to normal memories. The reason behind this is unclear. So, so SCP-3002 itself is a memory, hmm. right? Yeah. Or is it something that is giving it that memory? It's okay, I memory. just wanted to be sure. Addendum 3002-1. John Baelish was incarcerated in South Rock Penitentiary in 2006 and multiple accounts of breaking and entering, aggravated assault, and vehicular manslaughter. Dr. Lloyd was chosen to conduct this interview. 
Wait, wait, can I make a prediction? Sorry to interrupt again. Sure. Because cause I, cause I, we revealed that there's a series of emails. Are they going to like progressively remember less about the SCP each email? We'll have to see. All right. So who do you want to be in this log? I'll be Dr. Lloyd. I'll be Baelish. Dr. Lloyd enters the interview room and takes a seat. Baelish was led into the room shortly <laughs> after and secured to the table. You know, I kind of dig these new blocks, but I thought I wasn't in for a transfer. Well, it's not a normal transfer, and most likely it won't be permanent. I'm Dr. Lloyd, I have a few questions to ask you. Well, that's a shame. You folks got good grub. Right. Would you like some water or something else to drink before we begin? Ah, uh, sure. Why not, right? The water will be here in a moment. Now, John, if John is what you go by, I want you to think back to your childhood. Are there any memories that stand out to you? Fun birthdays, broken bones, days in the park, anything? Call me whatever. Why do you care? You some sort of shrink? Please answer the question, John. Fine, fine, whatever. Giving it some thought, I remember the 17th of January, 1997. Uh, me and John were playing in Brum Woods, a uh, park by where we grew up. It was between me and John, so we... John? Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. John was a kid I spent a lot of time with when we were kids. I, I went by Joey back then. John Denunzio was his name, I think. Footnote? An auxiliary staff... Oh, sorry, there's a footnote. That's John right. Denunzio mentioned was confirmed to be a natural person through census records and social media. He's currently, li currently living in Lansing, Michigan. Observation has revealed no anomalous effects. I love how they were able to ni narrow down the specific John Denunzio of probably many John Denunzios. <laughs> An auxiliary staff enters the room, delivers several bottles of water, and exits. <clears throat> Anyways, we were just messing around, being dicks to some squirrels. It'd been cloudy for a while, but it was otherwise a great day, uh, that we just wanted to get out of the house. As we were talking, we got to the topic of school. A new kid had just started a class. I think her family moved from Slovakia or something. But John just started going on and on and on about how much of a fuck she was. Kind of being racist. That was just fucking weird. I, I'd known John forever, and he was always nice to everyone. Did you do anything about his, uh, renting? Y yeah, I, I called him out on that shit. I mean, his mom was Polish. God, I don't know what happened, but what he said just got under my skin. After I yelled at him, we just sort of shut up and went our separate ways. Did anything else of note happen? Yeah. Lily found me. Was she a friend of yours? Uh, just to check, is Lily the kid they were talking about? Doesn't mention. Okay. Yeah, she was always a little weird. I think she was... You know. Like, when she found me in the park, the first thing she did was get really close, put her hands on my shoulders, and asked me super seriously if I remembered her. And then just went on and on about some school project. Honestly, how could I forget Lily? She was always... Huh. I can't actually remember. Can you at least recall what she looked like? Yeah. She had super blonde hair, I think, and she... I... I can't remember nothing. That's not right. She was one of my best friends. Was she? I swear I know her, but I... Well, please try to be calm. We'll have you transfer back to yourself shortly. And log. <laughs> After several interviews, multiple common details can be found between all accounts of SCP-3002. These include the weather being cloudy but warm, an argument with a friend concerning a new child in school, and the presence of a female child with blonde hair, most often described as Slovakian or Eastern European. So what do we think so far? So I guess they mentioned it was all prisoners in this place, so maybe it was local to that region, and this girl, like, maybe inserted herself in their memories or, like, in an area, and when they went in that area, they got the memory? I don't know. It's weird that the more they talk about it, the more they forget, though. Oh. And that first email was from July 28th, 2014. This next one is Tuesday, December 15th, 2015. At 8.03 p.m., 051 wrote, uh, 05 <laughs> underscore one at foundation.scp. <laughs> Such a shitty email. Well, it's, not, it's internal. You don't want to make it sort of cryptic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Oh. I'm not sure if this means she's back or if these are just jumbles of her memories. Thoughts? Is a possibility Project Left had additional side effects we didn't account for? I want to make sure this doesn't come back to hurt us. Keep an eye on this. 
a vels a 5 command 051 at foundation.scp. Document prepared by Dr. Daryl Lloyd. Date 2015-12-13. Warning. The following document contains a class 2 info hazard, mild, mild danger. Medic safety procedures enacted using seed... <laughs> item number. Put that in Minecraft. Yes, put that in Minecraft, see what world comes out. Item number. SCP-3002. Object class, use of lead. Wait a minute. Hold on. Used to be a safe. Oh, how strange. Hmm. Special container procedures. A single written account of SCP-3002 has been stored in Site-41's anomalous document vault. Testing must be performed by at least three staff members with O3-3002 security clearance. The test subjects only personnel who does not have an active CL2 memetic countermeasure must be given Class C amnestics following the test. Or... Oh, so this is the first time we've seen a memetic countermeasure, I think. Mm. Yeah. So I guess that's like something that repels memetic shit? Yeah. All documentation concerning the SCP must have memetic countermeasures able to suppress a Class 2 info hazard. In addition, documentation is not allowed to leave the SCP-3002 research space or be shown to personnel not on the SCP-3002 project. So I forgot, when it comes to classes in SCP, the smaller the number, the more threatening, right? Um, I believe... Sure. Well, I, I, I don't know, there's no real consensus. Right, because of how the wiki is, that makes sense. Uh, continue. Uh, a single person from the initial a group discovered uh, to have been affected by the SCP has been kept in a standard humanoid containment cell for the purpose of long-term study and analysis of SCP exposure. If any person is discovered to have been affected by the SCP, they are given Class C or Class B amnestics, depending on when it was determined they were initially contaminated. Currently, a means to memetically or physically identify a person affected by the SCP without the need for vocal confirmation is being researched, tentatively titled Project Veselka. Speak to Dr. Lloyd for more information on this project. So I'm guessing that the more they talk, it's like the more they're losing, hence why it's so hard to quote-unquote contain the memory, yeah? Non-emergency update. Blank blank 2016. Project Faselka has begun final testing with early trials showing great success in identifying effective individuals without the need for an interview. Instructions and equipment to properly use the project are being shipped to Foundation sites and operatives in Indiana and part of Illinois. A science agent should begin mm -hmm. searching high population areas such as Indianapolis and Chicago first before moving towards low population areas. Description uh, SCP 3002 is a Class II contagious memetic hazard with a limited effect on the memories of subjects exposed to it. The anomaly implants memory within the subject's mind which subjects identify as their own. The SCP is transmitted through any communication describing the anomalous memory, including text and speech. An SCP-3002 memory is typically... Okay, so now... Sorry. And now instead of the memory being the SCP, it's an entity that implants memories. Mm. Well, it's something that's something, yeah. Yeah. An SCP-3002 memory is typically sit at in the subject's youth. All accounts have the subject spending time in a local park with the person they considered their best friend. Several details are consistent between all memories, including the fact that the day in question was cloudy but fairly warm, that the subject and their friend got into an argument about a new child at school, and that new child was a Slovakian immigrant by the name of Lily Vaselka, labelled SCP-3002-1. Occasionally, subjects will recall Lily sitting on a bench near them or asking them specific questions. All of the details differ between subjects. SCP-3002-1 is most often described as having pale blonde hair and appearing anemic. Anemic, even, sorry. Subjects recall her asking yeah. them very specific questions, generally about her herself or a project that is soon to be related to school. Maybe she's just uh, an SCP that wants friends, you know? We'll see. SCP-3002 was originally discovered when a psychologist working at South Rock Penitentiary in northwestern Indiana. N Indiana? <laughs> what the fuck did I just say? Indiana? <laughs> <laughs> the new state. Noticed a large amount of inmates mentioning identical memories. Once the Foundation was involved, over 85% of the prisoner population appeared to have been affected by the SCP. The anomaly was documented and labelled as low-priority research. When initially documented, affected inmates displayed a perfect recollection. However, as interviews and testing progressed through the affected prisoners, the recollections of the anomalous memory began to show progressively fewer details. Incident 3002-2. On blank blank 2016, three staff members attempted to access the SCP's documentation. Hold on! Hold on! Hmm? This email was sent in 2015. Well, so how do they is... have shit from 2016? I guess there's an update on it. No, but you can't update it. Hmm. 
And this and, and the document prepared was written in 2015 as well. well I hope so. You, you just got to let it go, I think. I don't know. I can't tell if I was smart and I picked up something about the SCP or if it is just an update. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but on that date, three staff members attempted to access the SCP's documentation despite either not having proper clearance or not having reasonable prior knowledge of the SCP. The access log for that day has been included below. So at 3.15pm, J Bowers 1, who is a janitor, uh, attempted to access it. He was denied. And then an activation, also denied. Senior researcher, access oh granted, minor edits made. Uh, Are these their usernames at, at, at uh, the foundation? I guess so they're automatically sort of assigned there, yeah. Uh, then edits reverted. Then Vanda again tries to make some edits. And they again revert it, and then lock the file. RISA officials conducted interviews with and anesthetized all three individuals. The interview with researcher Vanderbilt has been logged below. Alright, do you want me to be Vanderbilt or RISA Whitley? I'll be Whitley. Alright, go for it. RISA officer Whitley enters the interrogation room. Dr. Vanderbilt has been previously placed in the room by RISA security operatives. Dr. Damien Vanderbilt, I'm Officer Whitley with the Records and Information Security Administration. I'm speaking with you today due to concern of your recent edits to the documentation of a certain anomaly. I'm uh, not quite sure what you're talking about, son. Dr. Vanderbilt, if you could please refer to me as Whitley or Officer Whitley. Documentation in question is for SCP-3002. Yesterday evening, edits were made to the document using your account and personal terminal. I apologize, officer, but I'm still not sure which anomaly that is. I'm staffed with several projects right now, and I was working on several files and reports, all of which are within my purview to edit. Raz Officer Whitley opens their briefcase and produces a folder containing a physical copy of the SCP's documentation. Oh, right. That anomaly. I remembered saying a few minor errors, so I went and fixed them when I had some time to myself. According to our records, this is the first time you've accessed the SCP's documentation. Are you sure? Because I swear I've seen this before. Oh, oh no, he has the memory and he was trying to change it to his memory. Subject is silent for several seconds. Oh, wait, I do remember. I saw it over Lloyd's shoulder while I was walking to get lunch. Hey, that's shoulder surfing. That's a security breach. That is impossible. Due to the nature of the SCP, all information and documentation can only be accessed in a controlled environment. This is enforced with a specifically created memetic lock, which you bypass using administrative privileges. Okay, but that doesn't change the fact that all I did was a few minor grammatical edits. That also appears to be false. While grammatical edits were made, you also edited several instances of the phrase SCP-3002 and variations thereof to Lily Veselka. You also removed the line specifying that the being in associated memories was Slovakian. But she's not Slovakian. I've known her since I was a kid, and granted, she does have an accent. She's not Slovakian. Our reports are supposed to be factual, so I was making sure it was... Now that I think about it, I don't remember where she's from. Thank you for your cooperation, Dr. Vanderbilt. And but like... didn't Whitley try to access it, too? Because it says Rice of Wit. Yeah, oh, and it's reverted. reverted. Yeah. <laughs> He's just going back, and this feels like a wiki mod. Yeah. <laughs> going back, and... Dr. Vanderbilt was subsequently identified to be affected by the SCP. He was given Class B amnestics and relocated to Site 726. Dr. Lloyd was investigated for improper handling of SCP documentation. However, it was determined that he had never brought the SCP's files outside of its specified research area. Why are they spelling Lloyd wrong now? Lloyd had two L's before. Oh, yeah. no, it didn't. I'm dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dumb. Never brought it outside of its specific research area, which Vanderbilt had no access to. It's currently unknown how the SCP was able to affect him, as no vector of transmission could be determined. Creepy. You have new unrest messages. <clears throat> On Monday, August 8th, 2016, at 8.49am, 052 wrote, Ah, it appears this is not a side effect as Vell's fault. She seems to be specifically targeting people who know about Leaf. I sent RRH to take care of any personnel we had on the project and anything like effort site E, but they didn't have time to do much there before they had to leave to avoid being intercepted. E Perun, 05 command, 052 at foundation.scp. <laughs> Leith? What's Leith? Document prepared. Sorry, the reason, the reason I find the email so funny is because if there's such a simple format, then just anyone can email the 05. <laughs> it's just like, so easy to know their username. 
Document prepared by Dr. Daryl Lloyd, date 2016, 0804. Warning. The following document contains a Class X info hazard, extreme danger. Mimetic safety procedures enacted. For personnel with proper clearance, multiple high-intensity mimetic countermeasures have been spread randomly throughout documents. Attempting to access this document with improper clearance will result in anti-mimetic suppression. Seed. It's interesting that they keep putting a seed. I assume that's to show that, like, uh, if the seed has changed, they probably have the seed recording. If the seed changes, it's been edited or something? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Item number SCP-3002. Object class Kitter. Special containment procedures. All texts containing SCP-3002 must be destroyed aside from its official SCP documentation. Access to SCP documentation is limited to personnel with a level 4 slash 3002 security clearance or higher. Administrator override has been revoked with the exception of O5 Command and the current director of the Records of Information Security Administration. Procedure for Selka has been updated to include a mimetic trigger which can be used to identify affected persons. If an affected person is detected, they'd be sedated using ranged weaponry and collected or terminated. Depending on oh, the geez. prominence or importance, an affected individual may be surgically anesthetized. What? What's interesting to me is it's scary to them because like it's infecting memories, but all they're putting in is this childhood memory. It's not hurting anyone, so why are they taking it so seriously? Mm. You know what I mean? We'll find out. If all memories have been contaminated, or a sufficiently large proportion so as to impede normal functioning following surgery, the affected subject may be terminated with standard Foundation protocols before being enacted for concealing their death. All Foundation personnel above level 3 clearance are considered important individuals if they are discovered to have been effective. Surgical removal of memories is shown to be the only reliable way to remove SCP-3002 from a person. Pharmaceutical and aerial amnestics have failed to remove the anomaly in all cases since blank blank 2016. Any print companies or websites. So it's getting stronger. Any print companies or websites that are actively creating content containing the SCP, whether knowingly or not, are to be shut down and their owners terminated. All content they have created is to be destroyed. No testing or interviews may be held concerning the SCP without the current express permission of the current project head. At the time of this writing, the current project head is Dr. Lloyd. So this is interesting because one, it's clearly getting stronger over time based on since all cases since X. Two, it almost seems like the horror, if this was supposed to be a horror entry, more comes from the foundation being so batshit crazy about it than the fucking thing itself. Mm. But I don't know, maybe that'll change with this description. Description. SB-3002 is a Class X contagious mimetic hazard with wide-ranging effects on the memories of subjects exposed to it. Anomaly can remove, alter, or replace any memory of the subject and can create new memories in the subject which are not based on the subject's actual experience. Oh, so maybe that childhood memory was just to be a red herring and they can change whatever the fuck they want. Mm. SCP-3002 is capable of affecting declarative memories, which are declarative or explicit memories, are memories involving personal experience or factual information, and implicit memories, which are memories acquired and used unconsciously like muscle memory. Okay. Affected subjects identify altered memories of their own and will behave accordingly. In this way, the SCP has the ability to influence the personalities and actions of subjects. The transmission vector for SCP-3002 was originally believed to need the communication of a particular false memory involving a childhood walk in the woods, an argument with a friend, and an immigrant girl named Lily Vazalka. It has since been determined that the communication of any memory by an affected subject can lead to a 3002 infection. Oh god, so if someone's infected and they so tell you about anything of like, they remember. It's, it's basically a disease, but with memory. Yeah. Communication cool. can be by way of text, speech, electronic correspondence, mathematical formulas, and thoughts, in the case of telepathic entities or equipment. Oh, Jesus. Hang on. I, 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 I normally don't preemptively update, but depending on how many there are, I'm going to go back and upvote each of these pages. No, this is all go, one page. I'm going to forget. This is all one page. Oh, okay, good. Then never mind. I won't worry about it till later, because I have to log in anyway. Yeah. Uh, sorry, continue. So, while transmission may not include references to the Lily Vaselka false memory, persons affected by the SCP-3002 will generally recall a humanoid female by that name forming part of unrelated memories or experiences. This entity, referred to as SCP-3002-1, is described as having extremely pale blonde hair, appearing anemic, and being a childhood friend originally from an Eastern European country. In affected memories, SCP-3002-1 is often remembered approaching subjects and asking them questions pertaining to herself or an unspecified project, such as, what do you know about me, or has the project finished? SCP-3002 is avoided containment by displaying extremely adaptive behaviour. Due to its beha adaptive behaviour, it has been theorised that SCP-3002 or 3002-1 may be sapient. 
Epidemiological studies appear to indicate it's deliberately targeting individuals who create large amounts of information, or people who do large amounts of research on Slavic or Eastern European history and geography. The SCP was originally discovered in 2014, when a prison psychologist reported that a large number of inmates appeared to have extremely similar memories regarding a specific day from their childhoods. When initially contained, it was believed the anomaly was a simple shared memory, however further research has revealed additional effects not present or not noticed during initial containment. Due to the SCP's unknown effects at the time, it is believed that much of the prison staff was contaminated by the anomaly and are currently unknowingly acting as vectors to spread it. While specifically data is still being gathered, it is suspected that much of the population of the Midwest USA has been exposed to the SCP. No! Hey, Dan! Dan! Do you remember your childhood? You have to put me down! Yeah, I remember this argument I got in with my friend Tanhony in the woods about this. You're on your phone on Discord. Came into our school. <laughs> yeah, I was on my phone on Discord. I was like, oh, hey, what's it like over in England? And I he was like, I fucking hate that girl, Lily. Lily. She's a bitch. I hate her. I was like, How do you Whoa, know dude, about you don't her? even know her. You don't even live here. <laughs> And then Lily called you on Discord and joined the call. <laughs> yeah, and she was like, actually, do you remember that project we were doing? By the way, yeah, I, I remember a that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I'm infected, Tan. It's over. Oh, that's fine. Addendum 3002-4. Approximately four months after conducting interview 3002-3, Riser Officer Whitley lost control of their vehicle during a vacation that they scheduled following the previous interview. While not fatal, Officer Whitley did suffer severe spinal injuries. A Razor official initially spoke to Whitley regarding the incident notes the unusual behaviour and correlated back to the known effects of SB3002. Following this, Dr. Lloyd was contacted to conduct an interview with Whitley. Um, oh, fuck, these, so are, these quick, are both me. <laughs> real quick, I can take one of them off you. Which one do you want me to do? I'll be Whitley still. Okay, um... Who wrote this before we continue? This was... Um, the, 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 I forgot the, to ask at the beginning. May, May D, D, it says. Sorry, May D. Yes, May D wrote this. Everybody. I, I, did, them, I did say this. Appreciation. Oh, then I just forgot. <laughs> I, I finally remembered. I was so pissed off. Last episode, I remembered when you said it. And because you asked him to, Anomalous cut it out of the video. He made like a, a show of it on the YouTube video, which was all well and good. But that doesn't translate to the podcast version on Spotify. And that really <laughs> pissed me off. I'm, I'm unironically upset I about that. I like, your memories. Very upset. Yeah, that really made me mad. And Anomalous went down on my list. My hit list. Long, long, long. If you, I uh, assume you're listening to this now. No, I'll protect you no matter what edits you have to make from Darnell's wrath. You don't worry about it. Do what you have to. <laughs> anyway, I'm Whitley. You said. Uh, yeah. No, I'm Whitley. No. All right. So, what was Doctor Lloyd's voice again? He was How did sort you do of it? like this. He was very calm with a sort of smooth voice, like this. Very posh. All Maybe, right, but, it. but it wasn't. It was not like British right anything. It was just sort of like this. Like yeah, this. yeah. Just like fancy. Yeah. Dr. Dr. Lloyd, Lloyd enters. You got yeah. it. Dr. Lloyd enters Rice at Officer Whitley's room in Medical Site 923 and activates a physical mimetic countermeasure designed as part of Project Veselka. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Dr. Lloyd, it's a pleasure to see you. Likewise, Wit. Are they treating you well here? Comfortable? Food decent? Uh, maybe a bit more casual, because it seems like they know each other. <laughs> Likewise, Wit. Are they treating you well here? Comfortable? Food decent? Yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'd rather not say. So, gentle me, you've been a bit under the weather in regards to your... Cuckoo. To my knowledge, no. <laughs> Right, uh, so you remember a few weeks ago, you talked to Vanderbilt about Lily, er, SCP-3002, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, yes, I apologize. Uh, my injuries caught my memories were less than reliable lately. Do you remember sometime in your past or childhood meeting a girl by the name of Lily Vaselka? Think closely, she doesn't like to be thought about when she doesn't want to be. Well, I can't recall anyone by that name. Oh, that's why they progressively remembered less when they were being interviewed. She was hiding it. <sighs> All right, let's shift focus. Your recent actions have been strange, unnatural. What have you done recently? Why did you go on vacation? Well, for some time, I felt a mild compulsion to do 
research on a particular topic, specifically within Foundation files and knowledge bases. Did you act on that urge at all, Vit? I need to know. Well, negative, Doctor. I recognized the possible presence of a harmful meme and took the proper countermeasures to remove it. Is that all? Well, no. Once I had the threat properly removed, I performed this research on my own volition to satisfy my own curiosity. <laughs> I found several mention of entities similar to 3002 in a certain project working under the title Leaf. Yes, but what did you find, Wit? I don't have all day. What did you learn about Lily? I would rather not say. My vehicle collision was not an accident, despite security footage showing otherwise. I was pressured off the road by the sudden acts of three otherwise unrelated vehicles working in tandem. Whitley, this is your last chance to answer. I believe you are contaminated by SCP-3002 and are deliberately withholding information to interfere with research. Dr. Lloyd, I do not adequately feel I can trust you. I apologize, but I do not feel I would like to continue this interview. It was unresponsive to all of the questions. He got that 5G corona. <laughs> this is 5G got him. It was determined that Rice Officer Whitley had been affected by the SCP since their interaction with Dr. Vanderbilt. Due to the disruption and danger Whitley posed to the Foundation SCP-3002, they were recommended for termination, which was carried out on blank blank 2016 by the use of lethal injection. Oh, R.I.P. Exploration Log 3002-5 Following information extracted from Redacted, Agents were dispatched to the Zhansky National Park on the western edge of Ukraine. You see, my new that strategy... That expertly pronounced. <laughs> yeah, the, that, my just new, do it fast. My new strategy, just say it really fast so no one can tell if I pronounced it wrong. It actually does help pronouncing, usually. Uzansky. Agents discovered a ruined subterranean research facility that appeared to have been abandoned since 2013. Marking and document found in the facility indicated it was associated with the Foundation. No record of a facility in this location exists in Ukrainian or Foundation records. Despite the general condition of the facility indicating a long period of abandonment, there was some evidence of recent activity. Large amounts of documents and papers were found burnt, and several computers were found to be missing memory and storage devices. One of the facility's furnaces was discovered to have been activated shortly before the agent's arrival. The ashes inside were later analysed and determined to contain traces of human DNA matched SCP blank was free free blank boxes there. Peanut no! No! <laughs> they killed him, Tan. He has, he has they no killed human him. DNA. It wouldn't have been him. <laughs> they killed Cassie, then. While searching through the facility, agents discovered an office area with several piles of burnt documents. One document was found in a readable, readable state following chemical treatment. Why don't you take this one? Velas, I do not believe continuing active work on Project Leith is a protective use of our resources. While Leith has been an invaluable tool for averting broken masquerade type scenarios, having the project rely on a single anomaly has been causing undue stress in the subject. She has been displaying decreasingly less motor and cognitive function, which may be a consequence of the invasive equipment being used for the procedure. As an example of her cognitive deterioration, she does not respond or register her previous name or designation. Uh, I imagine this is Lily, and the SCP is trying to free her by affecting people. In addition to that, she has been becoming increasingly less willing to work with the technicians, to the point of resorting to self-harm in attempts to avoid procedures. At the current moment, she is under constant observation due to the fact that she attempted suicide several days ago. We're not entirely sure how, but it is currently believed she hid a dining utensil during a meal and sharpened it over the next few weeks. We have previously attempted to avoid this type of emotional distress by letting her participate in the various hobbies or activities she enjoyed prior to containment, such as photography and reading. With all that said, I do believe a controllable mass amnestic or memory-altering anomaly is practical in the event of a broken masquerade scenario, so continuing research and development in this field would be wise, as we know for a fact that the memetic trigger used in le Leith is present in all but a negligible amount of the population. Perhaps we could alter it to give us further control over their memories, instead of acting as an anchoring point for our subject. Since we've included the trigger with the neural archetype scans from Yellowstone, a procedure that is not reliant on a human subject would allow for continued use past the lifespan of our current subject, Perun. While investigating the facility, agents discovered a surgical theatre fitted with equipment used for invasive neurosurgery. Medical documents and restraints found in the room indicate the subjects or subjects operated in this location were conscious during the length of the procedures, where on the equipment indicates frequent usage. Ugh. 
you were viewing an archived version of SCP-3002. Would you like to see the current documentation? So is this the last iteration? This is, yes. Alright. Item number. This is a document prepared by Dr. Connor Teach, a new character. Date 2017 Hey! Hey, smoke big, buddy. This is what Lily was waiting for, the wee number. Oh my god, this is 2017 is like around the time we first met. Wow, the weed number. Item number, SCP-3002. No, I mean, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Object class, Keta. Special containment procedures. See document 3002-6. All contaminated people must be destroyed, including former staff, family, and acquaintances. Staff will be vetted by either 051 or 052 before access to this document or any remaining but staff how, is allowed. How do you know the 05 haven't been infected if they can be involved in this stuff? Are Ooh. they just powerful enough? Maybe, maybe they are. I like to imagine the O five because we've we've shown that some people that work like I've heard from Brighton like we've seen some people are more resistant to memetics, some people have powers. I imagine the O five each have like a a fucking anime power. <laughs> They're just so strong that they can't be affected by these anomalies. You hunt like, down like the, the anomaly kills. And you find yourself at the top of a staircase. <laughs> Yeah, the anomalies kill hundreds of thousands, no problem, but they try to come after the O5, but they can't go up the staircase. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Paul Lareff, but none can be allowed to learn my true identity. <laughs> Alright, description. SCP-3002 is a sapient memetic entity capable of, and currently attempting, to create an MK-class end-of-the-world scenario. Footnote, total loss of human consciousness. Oh. SCP-3002 does not have a definite form, instead it resides in any information or memory to which it has access. While within a person's mind, the SCP is capable of mimicking, altering, and removing their memories. There does not seem to be a limit to the changes the entity is capable of performing. When the SCP mimics a memory or piece of information, the original information becomes an additional instance of the anomaly. In doing this, the anomaly is capable of being present in all information and memories of a person. Once all facets of a person's mind have been contaminated, the person effectively loses conscious control of their bodies. Generally, the SCP allows her victims to live and act normally, however, when she encounters an unexposed person, she will influence all people in the area to converge on the person and forcefully expose them. While being controlled by the SCP, victims show no self-preservation instincts. The SCP is extremely hostile and is actively attempting to find and kill or contaminate all remaining Foundation personnel. Uh, probably because they hurt the girl that she is or was involved with. In the Project Leaf. She seems to be searching for any personnel involved with Project Leaf and Site E, an undocumented Foundation research facility located in Nushansky National Park. The SCP is capable of spreading between people through the exchange of information. As she is able to mimic any information, all information considered a vector of SCP-3002. It is currently believed that 78% of the human population is contaminated by the entity, and that 84% of new information and content created since blank blank 2014 contains SCP-3002. Including this podcast. Sorry, guys. Yeah, sorry. Lily Villas for so now you're infected. <laughs> sorry. SCP-3002 is displayed an extreme level of adaptability, preventing it from ever having been fully contained. In addition to this, several key Foundation employees were effectively being controlled by the SCP since its initial discovery. With access to internal Foundation procedures and plans, she was able to avoid being properly detected or analysed for some time. Document 3002-6 Due to the widespread contamination of SCP-3002, containment is impossible. Remaining staff members may submit proposals for the termination of the anomaly. Proposal. Cont contact known groups and person of interest for additional aid. From Dr. Kent Mayfield. Command response. Approved. 9-4 for against. Follow-up. Global Occult Coalition. No response. Unusual Incidents Unit. Response. 051 confirmed the presence of the SCP. Response destroyed. See, the reason this is doubly scary is this SCP only wants to destroy the Foundation. The Foundation has so many enemies. <laughs> that would probably be all about that. So we're probably going to get some name drops here that you haven't encountered yet. So uh, <laughs> Yeah, I can already see a few that I don't know. Mana Charitable Foundation, which we haven't encountered yet. No response. Horizon Initiative, which has been mentioned. No response. Grew Division P. Remember those. Uh, no response. Yep. Office from the Reclamation of Islamic Artifacts. No response. We know that one too. That was in the, the Flat Earth one. Oh, was it? I didn't remember. Yeah, brief, they briefly mentioned, because remember one of the part in the Flat Earth ones was like a sword from oh, Islam, yeah. and they wanted to get it back. A Prometheus Labs Incorporated. No response. We haven't encountered those yet. The Chaos Insurgency. Response and Unintelligible Vocal Recording. Anderson Robotics. No response. Marshall Carter and Dark. That. Response, 051 confirmed the presence Wait, of the SCP. Response destroyed. Wasn't 
wasn't Marshall Carter and Dark that like series of things we read on the stream about those people like doing a heist? Uh, they they were involved in that. Yeah, I believe so. Ah. Oh, oh, are we cool yet? It's the one people won't shut up about. In the we will read it. Some we will know. read it soon. <laughs> Are we All cool right. yet? Response. A box filled with several hard drives and digital storage devices containing copies of and plans for several anomalous art pieces. The Serpent's Hand. Response. A message reading, we were unable to offer support this time. We fear she is among us now. From WL. What's the Serpent's Hand? That sounds vaguely familiar. I don't, I don't remember if we counted them. They're sort of like the magicians. Uh. Uh, and nobody response a small note reading you should have expected this so nobody we might get <laughs> nobody. to it <laughs> nobody is is that the same nobody from the greek legend what greek legend the one about the guy who was talking to that cyclops and they were like who's there and he said nobody and the no. guy was like all right <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so yeah there's the responses we got so no help <laughs> Proposal. This is so sad. Destroy all information and contaminated people. Repopulate the Earth using SCP-2000. Command response. Declined. 2-4. 8 against. Who the fuck with a 2-4? <laughs> follow-up. No follow-up. Due to the massive distance between our current location and the location of SCP-2000, and the fact that no communication has been established with the site, our current consensus is that the SCP-2000 and its staff have been contaminated. We do not feel the risk is worth the attempt from AVELS, aka 051. Proposal. Create an anti-meme capable of suppressing SCP-3002 for a temporary amount of time. Dr. Kent Mayfield. Command response. Approved. 5-4-4 four, four against. Follow-up. An anti-meme capable of suppressing all memetic threats was created based on the memetic countermeasures used by Ricer. During testing... What's interesting to me is how come each one has less votes? First it was 9-4, to four, so 13. Hmm. Then it was 2-8, to eight, which is 10. Now 5-4, to four, which is 9. Well, uh, there's a clear, there's a clear possibility. That there are less so five over time, yeah. Oh. During testing, it was discovered that the anti meme had no effect on SCP 3002. It's believed that it normally altered the anti meme in a similar method to how it normally affects memories. As SCP 3002 seemed to be able to emulate an anti meme, we began investigation into the possibility that it was capable of hiding itself as an anti meme within a person's mind, effectively making them an unconscious agent for it. Following this lead, we discovered more than six people were contaminated in this fashion, including multiple members of the O5 Council. C. Green, aka O58. Proposed. Okay, so 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 the command response that's from O5, right? So they're losing more and more O5 people. Yeah. Okay. Proposal: Initiate the Ganymede Protocol. We need to start over, says Doctor Connor Teach. Command response: Declined two to six. Follow up: No follow up. There is no reason to enact such a drastic action. C. Green, O58. Proposal, investigate further into Project Leaf in an attempt to find a possible way to stop her. From Dr. Connor Teach, command response declined, uh, one for three against. Follow-up, no follow-up. There is no reason to investigate further into that project. Nothing additional will be gleaned from it. In addition, the O5 command has reasonable cause to believe that you have been contaminated oh. <laughs> termination will occur shortly. <laughs> They've contaminated O5 and are using those to kill the other O5. <laughs> Avel's O5 I just one. realized. Proposal, restart. Command response, no consensus, one-to-one. -one. Follow-up, field left blank. The end. So this SCP implies that the Foundation has officially been destroyed, or yeah, at least they, all they, the they, five. Yeah, they've lost pretty much here. So in this canon, all the Foundation have been eliminated. Pretty much. Which is interesting, because I wonder what all these other crazy groups are going to do, and what's going to happen to all those anomalies. So yeah, I actually really enjoy this one. This is a good one. That's good, but I mean, the only... This one can never be in, in a headcanon, because if it is, that means that SCP is over. Yeah, I don't. Right? I never really think that deeply into it in terms of, like, canon and stuff, whether I enjoy something. Yeah, it's good. It's a good article. It was well-written. The format was interesting, without being, like, over-the-top annoying. It was really cool, well-written. You know, had lots of details explaining stuff. I'm going to give this one a 12 out of 10. Nice. I was so threatened you would bust out the 13 there and just... I honestly, <laughs> I think I'm going to give it a 13 no, out of 10, now that you say it. <laughs> I told you, 13's the maximum score with my with my thing. So, so I'm just going to say it's 13 out of 13. No, it's 13 that... out of 10, sorry. But, <laughs> but, you don't get to decide, it's my rating there's, system. There's 10, okay, let's, let's settle this once and for all. So... Out of ten. Listen, this implies there are ten numbers that let it me, can be. Let me explain. Let me explain. The reason it's out of ten is ten is based on things like: are there grammatical problems? Is it structured well? Do the themes work? 
do like all the, all like the technical mechanical stuff how it's formatted. I pay for and then the I, I give and then I give up to it's like plus your three Mario Party or fucking bonus stuff. minus three based on my feelings about it. So this got a ten out of ten for all the all the like formatting, themes, grammar, etc. And, and then got plus some bonus three because I liked it that much. Yes, it's like getting bonus stars in Mario Party exactly. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna. I, I can't. I can't. I can't argue <laughs> about it. It's thir- It's thirteen out of ten. Okay. It won't ever go higher than thirteen. I swear. I heard this. I feel like I've heard this about twelve. But okay. No, no, you didn't. Because I did thirteen before. And I you remember forgot. you told Lily they would never go above twelve. <laughs> you son of a bitch, <laughs> Lily. I can't believe uh, anyways, this is so sad. This is so sad. So we are at sort of almost an hour mark here, so it will probably just be this one for today. Uh, we, it was a great SCP, yeah. though, so... Um... That was great. I, I hate doing this after we just read it last episode, but this is already my new favorite compared to Enon <laughs> Shisha. I think I like this one more. And you know me, Tan. We've done 40 episodes now. It's not like I do this every time you introduce a new big I know, SCP. You know me. Laugh. I, I it's just it, this is a really good one. What do you want me to it say? Really I don't it's know really why. I, did, I and I and I'm not hating on Ananta Shisha. You know, I'm really happy for you, Jorik, a random day cactus. That is an excellent article. I don't want to yeah, take away from that. It was but personally, but Jorif, my bad. But personally, if I was the only one in charge, and it wasn't like a vote, I would have given three thousand to the three thousand spot. That's a hot take. Be why? Because I just think it's overall just ever so slightly better. Uh, but they're both great, so no nice, hate. Nice. Uh, so um, I just got a text from DJ Cactus. He's uh, boycotting the podcast. I'm gonna <laughs> DJ Cactus. Yeah, he's all right. So um, we and let me open our last video so we can read some commentary. Read some comments. I want to see what they've said about me. I want to know if it's acceptable. Uh, <laughs> it's nothing good. It's not good, mate. Oh, we haven't yeah. we haven't settled on password for this episode either. Oh shit! But the password for this episode is Lily Veselka, obviously. Of course, of course. Tell us, tell us about your childhood memories of Lily Veselka. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the password. You have to give us your version. Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay. So first up in comments, Lost Network writes, "I'm finally caught up." Lost Network, you're a real one. You did it. You're finally caught. Banker Paul. <laughs> Panker Paul says, go back to your fish friend, Spongebob XDD. I'm fucking dying, XD. But uh, anyway, I didn't think y'all were ignoring me. I was just letting y'all know in the form of a joke, I guess. Transition. I wonder what discovering SCP merch would be like. Not very good. <laughs> it would be a bobblehead okay, of me, it. and it would come to life at it, night and steal your No, piece. no, it would be a bobblehead, but the, it's actually just Bobble's head. Like, a severed head yeah. dressed up like Bobble. And you can tell that the okay. makeup's running. Chaos Corvid writes, For context, I am making this comment before I listen. I don't want to sound negative, but I don't think I like any SCP I know from Series 4, except maybe 3000 itself, which I think is a pretty okay horror story. However, I will still listen. For you, Darnell, you make it all worth it. Oh, God. Uh, (laughs) Yes, even worth listening to Tanhony. I'm joking. Please don't hurt me. In all seriousness, though, I'm hoping Tan can make me not hate Series 4. Here's hoping there's just some good gems I missed. I tend to have bad luck when it comes to clicking randomly on the wiki. All the best SCPs I know come from stuff like the Exploring series, and you guys. Edit, the Ikea and Red Reality were based. I forgot they were Series 4. Well, I thought this one was pretty fucking good. I mean, I'm not gonna hate you if you don't like it, but this one's probably the best SCP I think we've ever read. Uh, this one was amazing. And uh, who wrote it again? Mayday? Is it Mayday Mayday. or Mayday? Mayday. Mayday. Mayday, Mayday, you're a real one. Uh, I'm not going to read all the replies, but uh, uh, Tan just said you get one, and then they devolved into an argument. Tan, Tan, I'm always responding to the audience. Tan only responds when someone slights him. So if you want his attention, slight him in the comments. How dare you? (laughs) That is the rule. You get one. Uh, RJB says, I would play the Discovering Creed co- crossover game, <laughs> to be honest, just Darnell and Tanhoney doing MST3K style commentary over the game. Discovering <laughs> SCPX Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Assassin! <laughs> O5B like, I just wanted order, Lily! <laughs> Lily is my uh, favorite assassin. <laughs> Comedy Man Cub says, My prediction was wrong. Pain. Nothing but pain. 
Nice. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that comedy man count, but we're going to move on. Uh, Killer sorry One Gamer One says, uh, "What? Sorry about your pain." Yeah. Killer One Gamer One says, "But before you cut the roleplay comments, you should cut the useless ones, like that one time I just said, ah." P.S. Ah. I would say the password, but I have no clue how to spell his name. And then, uh, 3639, he pinged. Oh, <laughs> Tan! Tan must have got a Windows notification. It's in the video. Boo! At 3639. That's funny as hell. Oh, that's so awkward. Editors, how dare you! No, I'm kidding. Uh, Anomalous did a great job. Uh, oh, God, this one's good. Help me. <laughs> I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Dino Tales says. Hey, Tancoon and Darnell Senpai okay. is my least okay. favorite iteration. Okay, you gotta stop. <laughs> what? <laughs> you gotta stop. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting out of hands. I like Dar... I don't know. I like Darnell Senpai, but Tancoon sounds wrong. Uh, oh, God, my heart burns acting up really bad. Hang on. Oh, Take God. Over. Oh, God. My SCP yeah, recommendations yeah, are SCP-3999. I am at the center of everything that happens to me. SCP-3435, Analysis Defining Dinosaur Painting, and SCP-3003, The End of History. I'm just going to say this. I feel bad. This guy, yeah. I'm just going to say this regarding SCP-3999, because I know we've got quite a few requests for that one. I am not 100% on whether it is something that can be done in the podcast format, because it's not to the same degree as the one that is just diagrams, but it is still a very visual base in the shape of the page. There's a lot of messing around with the text itself though so i'm not sure how well it would work maybe maybe we'll do it on a stream like we did with that <laughs> if we, i would probably not want to do it on a stream because not everyone sees it. if we do do it it will be in the podcast but i'm i just okay. want to hear you guys' thoughts about that maybe in the comments my theme recommendation is the right. serpent's hand yeah sure we'll get to that well what we can do is we can do it in a stream and then clip it out of the stream and make it its own video like a stream highlight yeah maybe free assassin your your speech, if you were uh, him <sighs> Pray that the dinosaur gods have mercy on you. The dinosaur gods. I love Dino Tales. The dinosaur gods will not smile upon you, Templar. Requiesta in pace. I love dinosaurs, so this guy's like dinosaur themed thing. I'm all for it. Five. Also, I think this guy single handedly populates a uh, Hunter Spatafora's recommendations list. He gives us like all the recommends. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if I use SCP-3006 on this podcast. Fuck around and find out. Six. What was SCP-3006 again? You don't remember. Seriously? Well, they were all like in a row number-wise. Of course. (laughs) Can you just tell me? It's twice the number one, of course. I just told you. Oh, the we are number one, but it keeps replicating? Yeah. Yeah. Based. Alright, six... Can I join Banker Pals Army? <laughs> I'm great at training dinosaurs for war. I'm coming for you, Tanhini. You know what you did. You get one. <laughs> Seven. Holy shit, I was right. Tanhini is a hentai breaker. No, he is not. <laughs> he is. He is I'm the not. best anime girl yell. To be fair, my, yeah? my, my hair has grown out quite a now. bit during quarantine, so it just sort of covered <laughs> my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Tanhini is I was bad. just on the train uh, when I noticed something weird going on. <laughs> Let's Boris get to the next WW <laughs> says Boris WW says Jontron, the racist gamer dude with the parrot? Edit. The creepy part of 166 is spelled out in its previous title, the teenage succubus. Do you so think yeah. The parrot is uh-oh. racist? Uh probably not because it's a parrot. Well you don't know because it can talk. That's true. You know what? That's true. <laughs> Let's come you can never be too careful. <laughs> uh anyway, yeah, that title for 166, I can see why people did not like it. Um Total comments, 10 out of 10. Oh, here we go. Oh, Can, the full, we, full you know what we need to do, Chan? We need to mix, we need to, we need to mix a fucking, I'm, I'm being serious. We need to mix like a 5 to 10 second song to like intro the Hunter Spatafora <laughs> comment every time. <laughs> the boss like, sometimes Bruh. appear. Bane of YouTube yeah. comment <laughs> section, Hunter Spatafora. Spatafora. <laughs> you come into, m- <laughs> you come into my realm. Oh, uh, all right. So, first comment. I saved the bingo board. I'm going to have to read all of the SCPs on them eventually. 3005 is a light that died. Which one was that? I feel bad this was the last episode we did. That's how bad my memory is. What was the light that died again? That was the one where the actual SCP file had been destroyed, but the test log remained. Oh, yeah. And the guy kept, like, putting his head in the light. That's right. 
SCP-3005 was not present when Foundation personnel made contact with the site. How do they know 3005 was not present when information regarding the appearance, behavior, and physical slash metaphysical properties of SCP-3005 has been lost? It's like knowing someone's name without knowing what they look like. You could pass right by them without realizing. Following recovery efforts, redacted segments of the original documentation for 3005 are available to the Foundation. Was Unit Blank even part of the Foundation? This wording is implying the Foundation never had these documents in the first place. This could explain why they weren't on the Foundation's cloud. Then some mm -hmm. comments regarding twice the number one. Mm -hmm. Colin Furs. This looked like it was played back only once. What about additional playbacks? If there were people in the van when the fireworks went off, then wouldn't there be obvious viscera? What about cries for help? Game Grumps. So do the originals continue through the video normally while the duplicates do things in the background, or is everyone in the video affected, which completely changes the content of the videos? 4008. Uh, please, oh please. Why does this always happen to me? Part 77. Wouldn't the video just be a blank screen or some form of video corruption at that point? All the equipment, including the television, game console, PC, recording equipment, etc., is being crushed by the bodies. Uh, wouldn't the equipment be destroyed the moment the playback begins, causing a paradox where there's no recorded video to play back in the first place? I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be scrambled, reddish, digitized video graphics. Mm. There shouldn't be any, because they record a game on a TV, so it would just be the game. It wouldn't show all the blood. And stuff. Well, I imagine there's, maybe there's a face come or something. They don't, they don't do that, usually. Maybe they do nowadays, actually. I haven't watched Game Grumps since high school, but they didn't do face cams. It was just the game. Um, 4630... Uh, okay, so this was for 3199, Humans Refuted. Uh, what was Humans Refuted again? Chickens. Oh, that was the weird chicken things, yeah. Extreme blunt force trauma. Pressure exceeding 180,000 PSI. High precision blades, serrated and non-serrated. Long-term acid exposure. How do 3199 instances hatch from their eggs if their eggshells are this tough? No different than trying to break out of a cage. Maybe it's... Uh, 113 hmm? Maybe the strunk. <laughs> Super strunk. But if that was true, then no containment would work on them. They could just bust through Maybe the walls. Maybe the inside is weak, but the outside is strong. <laughs> sure. Maybe it opens up Common like reading. an alien. I think the reason I had so few comments during DSCP episode 38 was because you read an article by DJ Cactus. I find that I mainly comment on things that catch my attention, like plot holes, something that really doesn't make sense with some thought. DJ Cactus's articles usually don't have these things. Well, it's not just Cactus that wrote that. It was a bunch of people, hmm. but I get what you're saying. DJ Cactus articles don't usually have these things that stick out, at least not obviously. So I end up... I do feel bad because I know what he means. He's trying to point out DJ Cactus in general, and he was involved. But it does... I get what you mean while you're specific about that. feels like the other two people in 3000 are not given credit for 3000 where they should be. Yeah. Which kind of sucks. It's kind of like all goes to Cactus. Uh, so I end up listening to the whole episode without finding anything to comment on. Basically, most Cactus articles are so good that I don't have any comment except it was sm it was a smooth read, nothing to say here. You can see this in my comment for DSCP episode 31, where the my only comment for 2399, a malfunctioning destroyer by DJ Cactus, was, I guess I have no comment for this SCP reading. Also, side note, I love that Hunter is so thorough. He timestamps everything in the videos, which we don't. He puts a link to every SCP he mentions, even by chance. <laughs> we should, like... He's way better than us at this stuff, TBH. This... Uh, next, parasocial relationships. So basically, you don't want to create a back... Oh, sorry, what were you saying, Tan? Don't worry. Oh, come it, on, I want to hear. I'm sorry. It didn't, it didn't matter anyway, it was just... No, Tan, say it! I'm not world. going to move on until you say it now. This damn world. Say it. Once again, I've been fallen upon by the, the footsteps of giants. I'll take my revenge on this <laughs> damn world. All right. Parasocial relationships. So basically, you don't want to create a back-and-forth roleplay with commenters. You just want to make jokes, and that's it. Nothing long-term, because some commenters would feel hurt if the role-playing interactions they have with you suddenly end. I looked it up, and it seems that a parasocial relationship is an unrequited friendship the audience feels towards the performers, caused by the performers acknowledging the audience, sometimes continuously in any way. When this acknowledgement ends, the audience can feel heartbroken, which can lead to depressions. Yeah, basically, that's it. We enjoy you guys. We love that you support us. We love talking to you in the Discord, but we don't want... You you guys to and i'm not implying that any of you are by any means but we don't want to create a a, 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 a thing where someone becomes obsessed with us mm -hmm. uh and that's what we try to avoid and role play tends to be a somewhat personal and really exciting thing that can sometimes facilitate relationships accelerating uh and i'd rather not do that with commenters uh it would just be better uh password assassino speech oh this is great so you're here to kill me well 
What now? You've brought my end, but yours is still to come. The unfairness of life will hurt you, not because it wants to, but because it does in your line of work. I can die happy as I cling to happy thoughts, but can you do the same when death comes for you? Think of this as my curse, my revenge against you. Requiesta in pace. What'd you say? That's what Etchia says when he kills the guy. He says, like, rest in peace, but in Italian. Oh, nice. On a stick. New headcanon. The fifthists are behind the 5G conspiracy. True. True. I love, like, the fucking contrast between Hunter's comment and that one sentence. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, mystery guy. I think this is supposed to be a speech. He just sort of started it. Adaptation. Humans are beings of adaptation. When move are faced with something different, we either adapt, ignore, or succumb to that difference. Those who succumb rot away, unable to adapt, and they die! They are forgotten, but they have consequences. As every action does, no matter as every action does, no matter how trivial, a throwaway comment that you told somebody as a joke could stay with them for their life. That comment could have a positive or negative impact on the person. It could break the person, and maybe they could not adapt or forget that inconsequential, inconsequential comment. The brain would rot and sink into madness without anyone knowing why that person went insane. We ignore death and the inevitability of it, or. We adapt by creating an afterlife. Those who succumbed to it were overtaken by it and lived a miserable life. Ironic that fear of death makes death welcoming. Insanity is subjective. So This is just like bullshit. This isn't a good speech at all. Sorry, Mr. Guy, this sucks. I just love crime. Subjective is subjective. Concepts and perception make the universe go. Without there is none. What am I? What are we? What is purpose? None of these have question marks. Life is abrupt and can cut out with no warning, and we don't realize there was no going back. People regret the last thing they say to a person before their abrupt end. They are haunted by the fact that they cannot go back. So they adapt or forget, because if they don't, they succumb to that guilt and are swallowed by their own thoughts. This is why an end is abrupt like a... Oh, and by the time you read this comment on your next video, I will delete this as it will prove my inconsequential point. How about another joke, uh, Murray? Yeah, this was just a lot of edge packed in one comment, but I can kind of dig it. Commenting. Uh, also, there was no punctuation, which made reading it very hard. <clears throat> broke, 3006. Wo oh, sorry, Quaker Button Nose says, Broke, 3006. Woke, that entry on the anomalous items list that's like anything posted online by the Green Grumps anomalously gets 200 plus likes before anyone's even looked at it. We aren't going to contain the Game Grumps because who the hell is going to notice that except us? I just realized I put 3007 twice on the bingo card. GD, uh, anomalous writer says, the sounds from 12803 will be engraved in my mind. Nice. P.S. Assassino. What are those sounds? Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> That was your fucking anime girl yell. It wasn't an anime. Oh. That was me getting stabbed. That was me getting stabbed. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Very sexually, anyway. No. <clears throat> well, in, in a sense, any murder is a fact. That's, thank you for commenting on my video. <laughs> Dr. Xavier, or Stealth Killer, says, I have returned, so I'm sorry for not introducing myself properly. Let me make up for it. I am Dr. Xavier, ex-Stealth Killer. By day, I Okay, I'm not reading this. No, I'm not. This is what I was saying. No roleplay comments. Damn it. He did say the password, though, which was Assassino. So, thank you. Thank you. And then finally, Jacob Cooper posted the bingo list in visual form. 3001, 3002, 3003, 3004, 3007, 3069, 3125, 3166, 001, 3199, 3213, 3300, 3999, 3998, 3999, 3930, 3333. Hell yeah. Hope you liked hearing a lot of numbers in a row. Thank you for commenting on my yes. video. Yes. <laughs> That's my so, generic response. <laughs> so everyone, as usual, thank you for commenting. Uh, I feel a little bad for skipping over you, Xavier, but we're trying to cut out the roleplay comics. Uh, unless that was your speech, in which case I feel bad, but I don't, I don't think that is I don't think speech. you would say that as you are being murdered. Yeah. <laughs> Someone stopped he's like, hello, I am Dr. Xavier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was talking about, like, and if you read it further, he's, like, talking about how he's been watching us for a while, and, yeah. Thank you for your continued support. Smile. Yes, we love your support. Uh, we love having you around. Um, please continue to support us. I'm doing a bow right now. You can't see, but I'm bowing at my computer. <laughs> I feel like, I, yeah, I feel like I have to make it up because I skipped this comment, but I, I said no more roleplay, man. 
just this once. All right. Uh, so any any closing remarks? Anything you want to plug? Anything you want to talk about, Tan? Uh, read April Space. That's a given. Uh, well, 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 well. Yeah, April Space Arc Three will be out soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. This Sunday it will start. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Get your tickets now. Read so April tomorrow, Space. From your perspective, in the future, this will be tomorrow. Um, wow, epic! So much content. Uh, but follow Lee Vazelka on Twitter. Uh, and she'll give you orders. <laughs> yeah. Is there a Lily Veselka Twitter account that'd be based? Probably, but it's probably not related to SCP. It's probably just someone's name. So don't don't do that. Actually, sorry. Yeah. D- uh, what you should do is tell us if you want to see VR chat videos sporadically or not. So, there's a correct answer, and I want you to give it. But I won't tell you which one it is. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted order. I can be stabbed in VR now. Ah. Finally. I've already killed Tan 3,007 times in VR. I have snapped your neck. Anyway, this is there's no longer any content. We're just talking now. Yeah. Bye! Bye-bye! Oh, wait, no, 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 wait, sorry. <clears throat> no, oh, sorry. No. Not bye yet. Oh, after uh, cre- post credit scene. Good, 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 listen to Good Morning Poon Poon. Uh, the new episode, episode three, has a swanky new intro. It is excellent. Excellent. Okay, bye! Bye! For real. For realsies.